In our last weather lesson, we talked about some of the measurable factors that can affect the weather that we have on Earth. But three of the major ones were temperature, pressure, and humidity. Today we're going to look at how those actually work together to create different weather conditions for an area. Now, when we talk about air, a lot of people just look in the air around the room and they think, well, there's nothing here, it's empty space. But air is actually made up of molecules. And these tiny molecules, we can't see them, but they're constantly moving, they're constantly interacting with each other. And the warmer the air is, the faster the molecules will move. They basically speed up when the air is warmer. And obviously, as they're moving around faster, they're going to be bumping into one another, and it kind of gives them a little bit more space, which makes the molecules spread a little bit farther apart. On the other hand, when air cools off, the molecules will tend to move slower, so they pack in together a little bit more. And this kind of gives us a relation between temperature and air pressure. Now, when we talk about air pressure, that's basically just a measure of how heavy the air is, or we could say it's how tightly packed together the molecules are. Essentially, warmer air, as it spreads apart, is going to be lighter. And that's why everybody's seen hot air balloons. A hot air balloon can float up because it's got lighter air in it. Warmer air is lighter air, less heavy, less dense, so it floats up above the air around it. So this idea of warmer air being less dense, basically that means it's lighter, it has lower pressure. Cooler air, on the other hand, tends to have relatively higher pressure. Because again, as the air cools, the molecules move slowly, they pack in, they take up less space for the same amount of molecules. Humidity is another important factor that determines weather because that's dealing with the amount of water vapor in the air. And obviously things like precipitation, the things that we talked about in the water cycle, this can affect humidity as water evaporates from Earth it has to go into the atmosphere, which increases humidity. As rain falls, that's going to take some of the water out of the air, which would decrease its humidity. And there's a concept of relative humidity that basically tells us how full of water is the air, so to speak. Because if we think about our air in terms of molecules, you can have air molecules, but you can also get water molecules in the form of water vapor that get into the air. And the more spread apart the air molecules are, this warmer air with lower pressure, there's more room between those spread apart molecules for water vapor. So on a warm day, the air can hold a lot of water vapor. But on a cooler day, and particularly a very cold winter day, when the molecules are packed tightly together, there's not much room for the water vapor. So you can actually get less water vapor into the air on a cooler day than you can on a warmer day. Relative humidity just describes how full is the air with water vapor in comparison to what it can hold. So, for instance, on a warm day, 50% humidity would mean that the air is holding 50% of the water vapor that it possibly could. 100% humidity means that the air can hold no more water vapor. It's essentially full. On a cool day, though, 100% humidity is less humidity or less water vapor rather in the air than on a warm day. That's why a lot of the time in the summer we might make, make a comment about, oh, it's humid outside, because the air is very full of water vapor, making the air almost very dense, very thick, in comparison to a cooler winter day where the air is much drier. We also talk about air pressure in terms of high pressure and low pressure. And we've already said high pressure basically means that the molecules are spread, or rather packed tightly together, and high pressure is usually associated with clear skies and sunny weather. And the reason for that, as we already mentioned with humidity, the higher the air pressure, the more tightly packed the air molecules are, the less room there is for water vapor that would form clouds and cause rain. Low pressure, on the other hand, means that the molecules are spread apart, there's lots of room for water vapor, and often, because of that, you'll have more clouds in the sky. And as these clouds form, as these clouds continue to get water, they get heavier and can cause 
rain, clouds, and storms. So lower pressure is usually associated with cloudy skies and stormy weather. And we talk about high and low pressure as being kind of this idea of warmer, cooler air, but it's important to remember with weather that warm and cool is very much relative. For instance, during the summer, if you've had a 100 degree day, well, that 90 degree afternoon would be relatively cooler. Of course, in the wintertime, though, if you're having a 30 degree day, then it could warm up to 40 and you've really warmed up a lot. The molecules have moved apart quite a bit and the air pressure has decreased. So it is important to understand when we talk about high and low pressure, particularly with masses of air, we're talking in relation to the other air masses around it. In our next lesson, we'll actually talk about air masses. We'll learn more about how masses of warm and cool air, areas of high and low pressure interact with each other.